Mully and Haw, Chicago Sports Radio 6-7 to the score. Tis the season to talk to Ole Krutz. All guests on the score hotline appear powered by IBEW Local 9, Chicago's original powerhouse since 1892. Olin, good morning. How are you? Good morning, guys. How are you? We are fired up. Uh, it was fun to watch some football. It was fun to watch uh, Washington get into that Final Four. Uh, that was a great game. They played. Uh, Olin, congratulations. I know you inspire everyone. <laughs> Kids don't really even, they probably look at my picture and say, who the hell is that? But, uh, <laughs> I got to go out to that game. And, you know, since Coach DeBoer took over, he's 24-2, and two, guys. Wow. I mean, it was a fun game to be at. Um, obviously, uh, Washington goes up early. Oregon storms back. And then, uh, you know, it was fun for me to see the offensive line. I thought the offensive line and the running back took, running back took over the game late. Uh, but two good football teams getting after it. And uh, they've done a hell of a job out there at University of Washington, keeping it going since Coach Peterson stepped down. Everybody was worried about uh, how they would continue their winning ways, and they have, and they made the right choice, the right hire. It sure looks like now, obviously, uh, Coach DeBoer coaching Indiana, OC quarterback coach, bringing Penix over. Uh, as you guys know, with the six-year COVID and all these older quarterbacks, uh, things have changed, but that got Washington on the right track. What do you think about their chances now, Olin? I'm curious to get your take on what happened with the Final Four and Washington's place in it, and then answer the question quickly that we were asked this morning by Mully, Who's the first person you think of when you think of Washington football? <laughs> I said I, I, you. Honestly, Washington football, I think of Warren Moon. Uh, he's probably the first person ah, I think about. That's a good answer. Um, when I think about Washington, University of Washington football. Now, everything that was going on made the, made the weekend interesting with college football. And who do you think should be in? Because it's like who's earned it, but who are the best teams, right? And who is actually the committee? I don't even know who the committee is uh, that decides these, these, these questions. But... Uh, Washington's chances now they'll play Sarkeesian in Texas. Sarkeesian uh, coached at Washington 2009 to 2013. So interesting matchup. And they beat Texas in the Alamo Bowl last year. So we'll see this year how this game works out. But, you know, it, it's going to be, guys, I mean, Alabama and Alabama. I, mean, I don't know if you guys saw that on Twitter where Michigan learned they were playing Alabama. But, uh, if, you know, if you, if you take the four best teams, how do you keep Georgia out? Uh, but do you take the team that earns it with FSU? But, It'll be an inch, it'll be interesting, man. I mean, Alabama's got to be favored, I would think, in Vegas to win the whole thing, right? So uh, we'll see what happens there. But Washington would have would have a tough game if they went up against a team like Alabama uh, in a championship game, and and they still got to get through Texas, a very good football team who beat Alabama, I think, was in week two. And I, I haven't seen much of Texas to be honest, guys. I would have to study that matchup uh, with those two teams. But I I would give Washington a pretty good chance probably in that game, and then in, in the last game they they would have to really. Uh, pull a rabbit out of their hat to beat those two teams. Don't ask me how I know this, but DeBoer is Dutch for the farmer. Just, just for your information. Uh, <laughs> that is good information. Yeah, man. you that need really that is. stuff. You really need it. Uh, so that's his history. Uh, at any rate, uh, do you think being nine and a half dogs to a team they beat earlier in the year motivated them? I always wonder if players are aware of that stuff and if it fires them up. Yeah, I mean, it must have. I, I was trying to figure out the whole, the time I was in Vegas, how they were nine and a half dogs, right? right? Just kind of looking at the matchups and, and what, what, what was the thought process there? Some, some guys I was talking to in Vegas that seemed to be in the know were saying that uh, they thought Penix was injured and maybe that mm. why, that's why it was, uh, uh, the spread was so high. But the game never looked like that, right? Washington no. actually looked a better team the whole game. And if, and if Oregon doesn't go two for one, uh, at the end of the half, the game's not even really close, right. guys. So just interesting. I, I mean, I don't know. I'd have to study college football a lot more to know why there were nine and a half dogs. But um, th that was one of the most interesting things. And, I, and I'm sure, I mean, you're in the locker room. Uh, Coach DeBoer's probably using it. You know, we beat this team last time. How are we nine and a half dogs? And, and I'm sure that motivated them. Oh, and going to the NFL, obviously a lot of takeaways yesterday from a Bears perspective or from a division perspective None bigger than the Packers playing uh, at Lambeau, beating the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes. And Jordan Love doing it again. He was consistent. He's been pretty efficient. And last night, you know, he protected the football and he threw the touchdown passes. And, he, and he's, he's really on that path, surprisingly to, to some of us. Uh, I just wonder what your biggest takeaway was on Sunday and how impressed you are by the Packers. 
Uh, the Packers look good last night. You can't argue. And they've looked good now, you know, for I think they won four of the last five games, right? They're back to six and six now. I think they won their last three. And anytime you beat the Chiefs, that's impressive. We all know Coach uh, with uh, Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid. Uh, that's not an easy win there. But, you know, when I was watching it, uh, actually, I was thinking to myself, man, uh, they got the secret sauce, right? You got to sit for two years behind a Hall of Famer. The problem mm-hmm. is you got to find a Hall of Famer. Uh, that's the hardest <laughs> thing to do, <laughs> you know, and, and maybe not rushing these quarterbacks to play are the best things. But he sure looks like he, he's playing quarterback at a high level. Uh, you know, they don't even have their left tackle, Bakhtiari, and they're still winning these games. Their running back, Aaron Jones, is out. Uh, they're still winning these games. The defense with all their high draft picks uh, playing at a high level right now and, and really competing. They got that pass rush with Gary, and they just got a lot of guys, man. Uh, they got a lot of things that, that are winning football games right now. Uh, none more than Jordan Love, uh, who's, playing, who's playing good quarterback. And, and you know, something from, from a Chicago Bears guy, a uh, guy who's uh, lived in Illinois now since 1998. Uh, it's not the most comfortable feeling to watch that guy play quarterback at that level when you're watching him play. And, and those guys have turned it around from the way they looked early in the year because, uh, you know, I, I was part of the celebration. I was saying, man, they finally got a bad quarterback, right? We're happy about the fact that the Packers were going to struggle. And now all of a sudden uh, they seem to have fixed that problem. And, and it's, you know, in a division, young quarterback, really young football team, just the future of the Chicago Bears when you're looking at the overall picture there uh, for a team that's, you know, we, you know, just not doing very well the last for, for, for a long time now here in Chicago to see the Packers again back on a winning streak, back with a capable quarterback. Uh, gosh, it just seems like if they had the secret sauce up there and it's been forever uh, that they've had really good quarterback play. It, it was curious to watch Detroit and just kind of, see them figure out a way to win in uh, New Orleans and kind of get out of there with a, with a win because obviously that's the Bears' next opponent. And it seems like they're getting hit with the injury bug on the offensive line, and it's just kind of messing up uh, their just the synchronicity that you need in terms of choreographed movement on that line. I, I just um, It just occurred to me, you know, now with the Bears playing them, one of the dangers with that team is they have the best offensive line of football. If, if, if you know, Ragnow is seriously injured, if there's, you know, any kind of repercussion from that, it would be advantage Bears. Yeah, definitely, right? When you, when you game, and I think it was the first couple of drives they had those guys in, and they went right down the field, right? Jonah Jackson was back. Mm. Uh, I talked to you guys about Jonah Jackson being out for that first matchup and how big that was for the Chicago Bears, right? Because uh, Jonah Jackson, if you ask me, maybe, maybe – Pretty close to Panay Sewell, guys, when he plays left guard. Now, Panay Sewell also plays, obviously plays a premium position at tackle and a high draft pick, so uh, more attention there. But Jonah Jackson inside, really physical run presence, and you could see that on the first drive. And like you, Molly, I was thinking, uh-oh, man, uh, they finally got their line back, and the Chicago Bears got to play them, and then Ragnall goes down. And I think even at the end of the game, uh, their really good D tackle, Aleem McNeil, looked like he was injured too, uh, struggling with something in his knee. So... We'll see. That's this time of year, right? But obviously, if Frank Ragnow is out, that's going to hurt the Lions. He's he's very good center. And and, when, and as you guys know, all you need is one piece missing from your offensive line for your offensive line to struggle. So, uh, like you're saying, these Lions, they find ways to win. I thought golf looked a little better uh, yesterday. Yeah. Obviously, Laporta was hard to stop. Uh, but their defense seems like their defense. And, you know, uh, Justin Fields and the offense looked pretty good uh, last time they played. The Detroit Lions put up some points, uh, put up a lot of yards, kind of just fell apart. You know, we had, we had four takeaways. You wonder how the Bears are going to compete with the Lions without four takeaways. They did that the last time. But the defense is playing at a high level like they showed against Minnesota. Uh, they did that against the Lions. If They played pretty damn good, guys, for, you know, what is most of seven and a quarters right now going on eight, except for uh, at the end of the game and, and uh, two-minute drills against the Lions. So if we can get that fixed, you expect the Bears to compete against the Detroit team who hasn't really been blowing anybody out lately. No doubt about it. The defense deserves the kind of credit that they have shown and the improvement they have shown. Only I wonder, though, as the Bears get back to Hallis Hall today after a weekend off, a lot of the noise, most of it surrounding the Bears, involves the future of Matt Eberflus. Also, you know, the uncertainty at the quarterback position, what Justin Fields needs to do, and certainly the, the college quarterbacks who will be in the draft. What effect, if any, does that have on a team – after a bye week, do they come back and they, d- does that resonate? Does that register? Or are they just focused on the Lions and what's ahead on the schedule? I, I think everyone knows what's going on there at Hallis Hall and they're fighting for their jobs, right? And, and everybody's got to play well uh, 
to, to, at the end of this year to see what happens moving forward. And, and like you're talking about with Fields, right? I mean, uh, everyone's watching and what, you know, we, we started when he first came back, what would he do with these seven games, right? And look good against the Lions. And then he looked bad against Flores, right? And Flores kind of does that. I, I thought to myself, guys, I'm going to look there, take a look at what Flores does to other quarterbacks uh, like Justin mm. Fields. And, and I studied the Philadelphia Eagles game and it kind of did the same thing to, to Jalen Hurts. Uh, but, but of course, the Eagles are capable of rushing for, I think they ran for 260 yards that game, right? So Swift kind of takes over the game. He's run downhill, but uh, running quarterbacks, they struggle against. So you got to see what Justin Fields does against other teams. I'm sure Ryan Pose is watching that. And then and just interesting to see what Coach Eberflus does with this defense moving forward. They looked elite, right? They got four takeaways. Uh, they looked elite against the Vikings. Uh, they, they traded for Montez Sweat. They upped the talent there. Uh, guys are getting healthy. Everybody's back. Uh, now, now we'll see them at home against a team that they did really well against the last time, except for at the end of games, at the end of half. So uh, we're seeing where this team is headed. I don't know, guys, if it's going to be enough after these two years to save everyone's jobs, but it's just interesting to put doubt in the decision makers' minds mm. if everybody can play well, if everybody can play at a high level. Yeah, I, I, I think that that is, you know, and you, you could argue, and I don't know if you would, that this is the real last challenge on their on their uh, schedule because every team is beatable. The Lions are at least a winning team. Um, I, I think um, – did the Browns lose? The Browns look terrible, I believe, right? So they don't have a quarterback. Flacco. Flacco isn't the answer. And um, I'm just saying that was the only other team you had to worry about. I won a well, Super Green Bowl. Bay, Green Bay at the end of the year also. Oh, that's right? true. You're right. Bay. Atlanta's You're right. defense is pretty good. I mean – uh, honestly, uh, to evaluate Justin Fields, if you look at, you know, Cleveland, Atlanta, Green Bay, three of the last four games, a pretty good challenge for him there, right? Pretty good challenge defense. for yep. uh, the Bears offense uh, going forward. And can the defense dominate teams? They should dominate. And then you end the year up at Green Bay, right? Up at Green Bay, uh, Coach Flues, like you guys know, in this city, uh, in this town, in this state, if you can go to Green Bay uh, and, and maybe knock them out of the playoffs, who knows, right? Who knows? Uh, if they got to win that game to go to the playoffs, uh, uh, can you go up there? Uh, can you be spoiler? Can you keep Jordan Love and his crew in Lafleur home? You never know. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to keep it interesting for the year. So uh, I'll try to get it interesting for myself yeah, also. Right? That's uh, good. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll get that game. We need you never that. Know. That's yeah. fair. Hey, I mean, maybe they'll flex them in a Sunday night. Who knows? <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll just do everything here today. But on, I think that's, that's fair. And I think people are doing that a little bit when they watch what's happening around the, the NFL. You look at the mm-hmm. Packers and they're 6-6. Six and six, And you look at some other teams, they're 6-6. Six and six, and you, you can fall into a, a trap pretty easily just to wonder, okay, the Bears are four and eight. Are they two plays away from being six and six, or are they two plays away from being, you know, having two victories? I don't know which way to look at it. How how do you look at it? I, I think you have to look at it the, for the total two years, right, and and, and the, where they're going unless they really put on a show uh, this last, you know, five games that they got here. I think the way we're looking at it is the way you know it's it's the it's the most positive way to look at it, right? Can the Bears turn around? Uh, can Justin Fields put on a show? Can the defense keep? Uh, doing, you know, I don't know if it's easy to get four takeaways every game, but uh, they seem to be on a roll. And uh, this secondary that Ryan Poles has put together is playing at a high level, right? Jalen Johnson, uh, Gordon Brisker, Eddie Jackson, uh, Tyreek Stevenson should be coming back since Montez Sweat came. Uh, we do have a pass rush here. So uh, it is very interesting to watch with TJ Edwards and, and, and Edmonds and uh, all these names I just mentioned, guys. When I say that to you guys, uh, it's been a while around here since you've mentioned a group like that, right? Where it's like, mm-hmm. oh, man. They got all those guys, huh? They got all that talent. When you put the roster up, even if even even if the Lions' whole offensive line, honestly, guys, were playing, uh, when I mention all those names and you match them up, and they got to meet them at Soldier Field with the crowd noise at home, uh, as you guys noticed last night, uh, yesterday with a few of the scores, mm. uh, with a few of the way the Chargers six zero, I think it's New England. The weather oh, has changed, awesome. right? The weather has changed, so uh, now it's different football. Depends on where you're playing. I was talking about that watching University of Washington. I'm like, man, they're going to find out, right? One day they'll be in Illinois and Champaign trying to throw the ball around. It'll be interesting, right? So <laughs> all these teams, are, uh, it's going to be interesting as we move forward here, uh, what teams have defense, what teams can play in the cold, what teams can run the ball. Uh, as far as the Bears goes, I think we all know the storyline. We all know uh, what's going on with them. We all know how impressive they got to look to save jobs up there at Hallis Hall. This segment with Olin Kruch is sponsored by Plumbers 911. Plumbing emergency? Call the plumbing professionals available 24-7 at 1-833-PLUM-911. And Olin, um, 
maybe the only really good news to come out of the weekend was uh, was seeing the Jets lose. They managed eight points, and uh, and that pretty much ends any speculation about Aaron Rodgers coming back. Mercifully, I hope that's the case. Uh, I said to David, you know that guy returned to practice last week because if he returns this week, no one cares. So, you know, he's always looking to take a bow. Uh, mercifully, we probably – he. what's the point, right? They're not going to the playoffs. There's, there's no sense in pretending. They started Boyle. Trevor Simeon came into that game. So uh, that's good to see. And didn't injure himself. And he did not get hurt on the way in. Yeah. Everyone's got marketing teams now, Molly. They know how to make the needle move, right? They, they, they know what they're supposed to be doing. I think I think high school quarterbacks have marketing teams nowadays with the money they're paying uh, these kids coming out of uh, just coming out of high school. So, uh, it's, I tell you what, man. Uh, as a former athlete, uh, when you see these injuries, uh, you're hoping someone found a way, right? You're hoping someone found a way to get back. And obviously, they have all this uh, stem cell and all these other things sure. nowadays that you can do to try to regenerate. Your tendon and your ligaments. Now, now what he was doing uh, seemed out there, and it seemed like well, maybe he didn't really fully tear it. And uh, you're trying to wonder how he did it. It seems like I just came back to practice. Um, I don't know. I, I didn't know what to feel about that because as a obviously it's Aaron Rodgers, you're like, man, is he is he just getting attention? His marketing team trying to go out there, but on the same side, you're hoping he can get back and prove that you can come back earlier uh, from those kind of injuries and, and something. Uh, they found a way to do it, but. Uh, it would have been amazing if he did it, right? It would have been amazing if he would have came back and actually played. Everybody was like, what the hell? Is he actually practicing? Oh, and I wanted to ask you this after seeing it last night. I was curious, in all your years of playing for the Bears, did you ever get into on the sideline with somebody not in uniform the way that Dre Greenlaw <laughs> did with the Eagles director of security? <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, I'm sure it's possible, uh, but not not somebody who wasn't dressed. I got fined. In a bang against the Bengals in preseason one time for swearing at Dick LeBeau on the sideline. I was actually, um, I was actually on the sideline, uh, and I had a hot, a hot dog and popcorn already because I was starting center and I was out. But we lost three centers in the preseason game. Uh, I think I was in my mid twenties, and they're like, "Oh, you want to go back in?" I'm like, "Sure, why not?" You're right. I'm gonna go back in there and uh, play more football in overtime. I'd already been out for three quarters. They put me in there. I ended up uh, on the side, the Bengals sideline somehow. I went against a fifth string nose guard and I was very proud of myself with the way I blocked him and everyone was screaming at me to get out. So I swore at Dick LeBeau uh, and they, they find me. They actually caught it on TV. But, you know, it's funny about uh, watching that. Uh, the, the entertainment value was unbelievable. Right? Just watching a, a guy oh, on the side yeah. and his name is Dom and the accounting yeah. guy from Philadelphia. Yeah. But um, I thought, guys, you, uh, what was it, last year, I think it was, uh, against the Bills, I think it was Quay Walker. Uh, he got thrown out, right? Wasn't yeah. it uh, the Bills game? And I thought at that time, the NFL needed to really clear up what people on the sidelines should be able to do who aren't on a team, who aren't a coach. Uh, just like I, I never really found out who that Buffalo Bills guy was. Uh, if you're on the sideline, I'm telling you right now, in my opinion, and you see a lot of former players on Twitter echoing this, you shouldn't be touching a football player who is, uh, uh, I mean, I know you, you shouldn't be touching people on the sideline, but uh, you're so emotional at that moment. You're, in, you're into a game, you're flying around. It takes a different mentality, a different kind of violence a different kind of temperament to play in an NFL game and people just grab you and throw you. And even if you don't know who the hell you, they are, uh, you're still on the field, right? You're still in the middle of a game. I really think the NFL, I thought even then, uh, was that a year or two ago, I thought even then they had to clear up what these guys on the sideline should be doing because uh, no matter who this guy is, he shouldn't grab a player, tell him get out of here and throw him off and tell him that was bullshit, which I think, I'm sorry about that. Forget about it. hit the dump button, but... Um, I just, it's just an interesting, I don't think it's a huge deal, uh, just an interesting situation that, that I think the NFL can be a lot clearer on for these guys on the sideline. I've been on NFL sideline, guys. Sometimes you got to tell these equipment guys, these doctors and stuff, keep it down, quiet down. They're screaming at players. They're screaming at refs. Uh, you guys relax. You guys are never going to have to hit an NFL guy. Dick LeBeau it was like, was the mentor of Dick Jerron. I mean, he, mm -hmm. he's like one of the great architects of defense and like a yeah, he should talk trash on the sideline. He's considered, <laughs> a, he's considered a very nice guy. All kind of gruff. No, I don't, I don't doubt he is. I don't doubt he is. I think I'm, I, I look, uh, it was years ago. I, I think I, you know, he might've been swearing at me to be honest. Really? I felt, I felt, okay. Yes. I, well, then he yeah, had I felt, it coming. I, I felt threatened. You should have done, you should have done your, uh, your karate kid move. That was always. That, that, that worked a few times, you know, in Minnesota <laughs> and against Tampa Bay. That, that, uh... <laughs> Funniest thing I've ever seen. Oh, God. Great stuff, Ola. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate Thanks, Ola. it, guys. That is hysterical.